together against God and His anointed King, saying, let's come together and break away from the Creator once and for all, and let's cast off these controlling chains of God in His Christ. I can't tell you how powerful this translation is and how fitting it is for where we are as a world today. Not as a, it's just a nation, but as a world. And as we read into the book of Revelations and we see the ten kingdoms that are going to rise up and come under the anointing of a one world order, we can see how the nations are rebelling against God and His anointed Christ right now. And I'll tell you how that rebellion starts. It starts by, by denying God's Word. Because the Bible says in John 1, in the beginning was the Word. Everybody say the Word. The Word, the word was with God. Come on. And the Word was God. Jesus is the Word. And so if they rebel against the Word of God right now, they're rebelling against Jesus Himself. And if they're rebelling against Jesus, they're rebelling against God Himself. Come on. And that is what He says is going to take place right now the leaders of our earth are blind they are not seeing what God is trying to do and as a result they're leading blind people the blind leading the blind but I don't want to preach on that because that's discouraging and I think those of you who are already born again filled with the spirit I think you already knew that I don't think that's a revelation I don't think that's something that is all of a sudden coming to your attention like yeah he's right I think you already knew that what I want to spend my time on is verses 7 and 8 or chapter or verse 7 this is what God tells us in that same psalm he says today to me and you today I have given you glory everybody say glory glory Ask me to give you the nations, and I will do it. Did you hear that? Yeah. So God says, today I've given you glory. Glory is something mighty. Glory is something powerful. Glory is something different. I believe the glory of God is the key that opens the door for everything else that you need. I believe glory is the key that opens the door. He says, first of all in that, in that verse, I have given you glory. First, he says, I've given you my glory. And there's a reason glory comes first. I believe that glory comes first and then the nations come. Amen. A nation without the glory of God is never going to have that nation in revival. Can I get amen? amen? The glory comes first and then the harvest comes. The glory comes first and then the revival comes. Come on. The glory comes first and everything else flows out of the move of the glory of God. That's the problem today. So many people are trying to have a revival. So many people are trying to build a church. So many people are trying to build a ministry. So many people in your own personal life are trying to figure out what God wants you to do. Should you move here? Should you do this? Should you take a part in this? Should you get rid of this? Should you date this person? If you would get a hold of the glory of God first, the rest of it falls into place. Yes. The rest of it falls. And that's what Jesus came on. And He said it this way. If you seek Me first. Come on. That's the glory of God revealed, manifest on earth. If you seek first God and His kingdom. If you seek first the glory of God, the rest of the things will be added. The rest of your questions will be answered. Those who don't see, and listen to me, the glory of God, those who don't hear the voice of God, those who don't want to receive the glory of God, listen, they will, I guarantee you, I promise you, they will substitute that void where that glory is supposed to be with something else. The people in the church that don't have the glory of God will substitute that hollow spot in their spirit with religion. They'll substitute it with legalism. They'll substitute it with good works. They'll substitute it with acts of kindness or charity because there's a void in there. They will be trying to shove all this stuff in there, which is good in itself, but it's a, it, it, it's, it falls short of the glory of God that we were created for. Yes. Let me tell you what I see happening. And, and I put a post up about two, three weeks ago. Because somebody had asked a question. And, and I was concerned that most people in church today are coming to church to be entertained. Most people will go to a church to find entertainment. Amen. Let me explain that. They want good music. And they want good preaching. Most of them want short music and short preaching. <laughs> but they want it to be good. And they don't mind cake and ice cream afterwards. Come on. Come on. Coffee. Yeah. They, 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 they want church 
to become a thing of entertainment. And I'll tell you why. Because when the glory's not there, entertainment becomes a substitute for that glory. Let me give you the scripture. And when Moses comes back to deliver the children of Israel, he's got the glory of God. Come on. The staff represents the power and the glory of God in that man's hand. What did the Egyptian pharaoh, what did, did his magicians do? They didn't have the glory. They had entertainment. They mocked or they, they imitated the glory. And when Moses would throw down that staff, they would do the same thing. They would imitate it with their sorcery, with their magician. When you turn on the TV and you watch David Copperfield or some of these other magicians, what is that? It's entertainment. Come on, it's entertainment and it is sold as entertainment. All Pharaoh had was entertaining demonic wizards underneath him. While standing before him was the glory of God in the man of Moses. And I ask you, who prevailed and who won over in that engagement? Come on. It was the glory of God that won over entertainment. Uh, the kings, uh, every king that has ever lived doesn't necessarily, those that don't have the glory of God, they substitute with people entertaining them or the pomp and all the, the regal. The Pharisees in Jesus' day, they didn't have the glory of God. Come on, so what did they substitute it with? They would go stand on the street corners all dressed up. They would go to meetings and want the, the table, and they want to be seated at the head of the table. If you don't have the glory of God, my point is you're going to try to find something to fill the void. It's been that way throughout the entire Word of God. Yes. Why not just get the glory. Why not just go after the glory? Why not just say, God, I want your glory. I don't want the cheap substitution. I don't want the imitation. I want nothing but the real thing. I want your glory, God. Why would that movie producer take the Word of God, the, 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 the director, the writer, the screen, the screen play art, why would they, they take that movie Noah, why would they take it to the Word of God and twist it so much? Why would they do that? Why would they, they take it and, and bring uh, uh, witchcraft into it and demonic fallen angels coming to help Noah? But why would they do that? I mean, I mean, you would think that the church would rise up in a fit of rage. Come on. Yeah. I want to tell you, I'm friends with many people on Facebook, and I have watched people that are going to seminary college right now say the movie was good. People who are studying the Word of God, people who have been Christians longer than I have, saying the movie was entertaining. Oh, there's the E word. And as I was listening to all this, and somebody actually asked the question, what is your opinion of Noah? And he was referring to the movie, and you know how I can be sarcastic. I couldn't take it anymore. I said, well, I think Noah was a righteous man of God, and I'm thankful for him because, because of him. I'm here today. Come on, I'm here. And he was wanting to get he was wanting to get a, a reply out of the movie Noah. Well, here's my reply of that movie Noah. I don't care about the movie. My concern is how did Hollywood think it could entertain Christians by twisting the word of God if we haven't had doctrine twisted for years prior? There, there, is, there are churches, there are, are, are faith movements, there are prosperity movements, there are all kinds of movements. There are people using the Word of God, twisting it to entertain people in order to build big and huge ministries. Can I get an amen? I think Hollywood has taken notice that Christians are kind of naive when it comes to the Word. I wonder how many people went and saw that movie and don't even realize all the things that are false and, and demonic in that movie. Totally opposite of what, of what that paints God is this mean God and Noah is the one standing in the gap for the people. Say, no, I'm not going to build the ark. I'm not going to do this. God, you're so mean. You're going to kill the world. You're going to... You know what? That's not at all the way the Scriptures say it. That's not the way that it paints the picture. How could Hollywood think that church people could fall for that? We need to ask ourselves, how does Hollywood think it can make millions of dollars off of ours? Because we know the Word of God. We know what the glory of God looks like. Hollywood can't, with all their special effects, recreate or imitate the glory of God. Come on. You look at, you, you look at movies and, and, and the secular movement whenever it comes to the things of God. And when they talk about Jesus, they paint Him as this friendly guy. Come on. And, and Jesus was friendly. Amen. Come on. He was friendly. But they paint Him as that's all He was. He came to be everybody's friend. Everybody's friend. Everybody's friend. And I believe that Jesus wants us to have a friendship with Him. Absolutely. 
But I believe that friendship is so that we can walk with Him and share in Him what He's about to do on this earth. Come on. What He's about to do. He's looking for friends to join up with what He's about to do on this earth. Come on. He's not looking for religious scribes, Pharisees, or Sadducees to join Him. He's not looking for the religious elite to join Him. He's not looking for people that have it all together and everything neat and orderly in their life to join Him. He's looking for people who are willing to lay it all on the line and be His best friend. Because that's the one he can trust. Yes. I don't know about you, but I don't trust very many preachers. I don't know about you, but I don't trust very many preachers. Come on. I don't trust very many authors. Some of the authors, there's some authors right now out there that you used to trust, writing books now that you no longer like. Calling your fire strange. Come on, but you but prior to that, you used to think that that you know it's so you can't there's hardly anybody you can trust anymore. I'm telling you, you better get a hold of the word of God inside of you. Amen. Yeah. You better get a hold of the word of God for yourself because there's a whole bunch of twisting fixing to take place. A whole bunch of tweaking. Come on. There's gonna be some spiritual twerking going on with the word of God. Come on. I believe Jesus, listen, I believe he's looking for a best friend, not just a friend. Come on. I want to be a best friend. Yes. I wasn't going to share it, but I'm going to. Because uh, some of you in here know, some of you don't. It's kind of embarrassing for me. I was waiting for, this. <laughs> I, I, was, I, I was waiting for the message to be titled, um, Watch Out for the Truth. No, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> okay, let's go eat ice cream and cake. Uh, <laughs> or how about you do it? No, never mind then. See? <laughs> That's okay. He, so I don't hear it. But that back row is getting awfully loud right now. Honor our way. No, Charity. Huh? Yeah, thanks for the phone call that y'all were okay. I texted George. No, I don't